Hey guys, Pablo Munoz here. Welcome back to the third video in this mini series of the Adobe 3 Tools in Action. So in this video, we're going to create the copper material that uh, we're going to later on in Substance 3D Painter, we're going to mix it with the one that we created in the previous video. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here is where we left off. Uh, again, I'm just going to try to move a little bit faster now that you know the basics of how to set up these uh, materials. So let's go ahead and click on Project. I'm going to click on New Material. And I'm just going to rename it. And I'm going to call it um, Metal Copper. OK, so we have a fresh starting point to create this metal material. So what I'll do is bring in my textures to see which one I can use. Maybe um, this one I collected is kind of like um, like a rusty metal texture, uh, but it has a nice variation of color. And we can turn this into a very polished metal, uh, but using utilizing some of those um, colors from this, uh, this image. So one little advice that I can give you when you're collecting your references or even the, the images that you're going to use for your materials, try not to concentrate on getting the perfect image that is going to create the perfect material. Sometimes it's better to just focus on the quality of, like, let's say, the, the difference in in brightness uh, or the contrasting colors. And based on that, you can create something pretty powerful. So this is exactly what I'm trying to do in this case. Um, I'm not going to try to create a rust type of material. It's going to be a polished copper metal. But I'm going to take advantage of all of these colors and variate all of that. So if I bring in my references that we've been using, that variation in color and brightness is probably going to give me um, a lot of different yeah, a lot of different variation in color to play around with, uh, which I think is uh, what I need for this second material. Uh, so we're going to go for something similar to that, maybe a little bit more damaged than this to go in, you know, to have more contrast um, with the previous material. All right. So let's go ahead and drop that in there. And as we've done before, image to material, click OK. Wait until 3D Sampler does its thing. And here we go. So pretty decent. So I'm going to select the base material, set up my, my base height to 0 0.1. Um, yeah, 0 0.1 I think would be fine. Double check that display is also set to 0 0.1 so that it matches what we do in here. And I'm going to go to the roughness straight away and the base. So you could actually start with a base material that is a metallic material. But I'm not going to do that just because I'm going to show you a few other features that um, you might find interesting. But if you wanted to, you can just check or select this base material, the metallic one, um, which is ultimately what we're going to do. And like I showed you before, you can use the metallic slider to make this metallic as well. But this is all I'm going to change from the base material, just the height, right? So let's click on image to material. And we're going to go ahead and change the roughness value. So I'm going to reduce that so it's a bit more reflective. And just by doing that, it kind of like looks like this is still a very rough, um, rusted piece of metal, but kind of like a wet one. <laughs> so it has, um, you know, some rain water or something in it. So just by changing the, the value, I'm going to bring in my 2D view, go to the roughness, and I'm going to play around with the variations in roughness as well. In this case, I don't want this to be that, you know, that different. So I'm going to reduce the variation and have more consistent roughness across the uh, across the material. And I'm also going to reduce the importance of the albedo. I don't want to I don't want to control the the places where the rough bits are uh, with the albedo, you know, based on the on the brightness or the luminosity of the of the base image. So I just want to remove all of that. So I think that's it for um for the roughness. What I can do now is concentrate on the uh, micro details and the medium details, right? So if you remember in the previous video, I like to use the normal map just as a reference for the micro details. And because this is meant to be like a very polished metal, I'm going to reduce the micro details quite a bit. And that also, you know, immediately changes things. So I'm going to reduce that quite a bit. And now we're going to swap to the height map and we're going to change the medium details as well and play around with the large details. All right, not too bad. OK, so now the next thing is to make sure that this is tallable and that we can use these, regardless of what we place, these material, and we don't have those um, those seams. So 
I'm going to click on transform. Again, this is a texture that wasn't square. So this, all, this is also something that we did in the previous video. So I'm going to scale that. I'm going to try to remove that, you know, very dark patch. There we go. And let's go ahead and click on add layer. Go for tile or tiling. And we can play around with the tiling as well. And this is something that we did in the previous um, video. So I'm just going to play with the threshold and the blurriness of that seam. Maybe just scaling this box down. All right. So I think that's working fine. Um, and again, we, we still have the ability to make it or force it, um, make it tile to change these, um, this very harsh contrast in here. So let's click on Add Layer. Make it tile. All right, so pretty decent. We can go ahead and play with the threshold and the softness as well. And again, I'm not trying to create a rust material, so just keep that in mind. I'm just using this image as a base to have a variation in color and brightness, but that's that's about it. We're going to change this quite a bit later on. Now, if you want to recover some of the, the variation that you had, so let's go ahead and turn this off. So you see there's, there's a nice sort of patch and patterns around it. If you want to maintain that, but you also want to make it tile, um, I just want to show you the, the tool is there <laughs> in case you want to use it. So I'm going to turn off Make It Tile, click on Add Layer, and I'm just going to go for Clone clone Stamp. Okay, so this one is kind of like in Photoshop. It allows you to select a point in the image, and then you can stamp pieces or clone pieces of that area. So if you press the Alt key, you see that little... That little um, dot right there, you can click and drag it, or you can just hold the Alt key to add another point or to add that point in there. So I'm going to, let's say, click or move this around this area. So now this is my new source. And then with the brush, with this um, brush that you can see here, I can just go ahead and do this type of thing. And it sort of like paints that spot. And I can keep moving that so that I have something slightly different. So I can do that around the edge just by clicking and sort of filling in that area, right? And then you can click and move this around and you can yeah, change that that pattern. So this might be useful um, in some cases. I, I think without it works just fine, but if I go ahead and push this below make it tile and enable make it tile, um, you know, like I said, in this case might not work, but in a lot of the cases, this clone, um, this clone stamp works really well and it allows you to tweak that image so you don't have to do that in Photoshop or anything. You can do everything from 3D Sampler. So let's just delete that one. It doesn't, um, I don't want it. <laughs> I think the, the tile and the make it tile make it, um, are, are working just fine. All right, so the next thing is using the colorize that we've used in the past as well. Click on colorize and this is the one that's going to give color to that metal. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a dark brown or dark orange, maybe not that dark, something like that. And I'm going to play around with intensity. Again, I don't want to um, override all of the variation that I had in that original image. I just want to integrate everything within the same sort of hues. So just a tiny bit. There we go. And now that I think of it, maybe we need to um, play with more variation in the roughness. So I'm just going to go back to the image to material. Let's go to roughness and I'm just going to add a bit more variation and maybe let make it a little bit rougher. Otherwise, what I'm going to show you next is not going to be as easy to, to see. So now we have a, something a little bit rougher <laughs> than what we had before. So the next one is what is actually going to convert this material into a metallic material, right? rather than changing the base or anything like that. So we're going to change this and we're going to polish it with a metal polish. So we're going to click on add layer, go for polish or metal polish, actually metal or metal finish. Sorry, <laughs> click on metal finish. And that's just going to basically turn that material that we had and it's going to give it that metallic look. So that changes things quite a bit, but there's a lot of things that we can do to change this material, how this material reads. So let's expand the properties of the metal finish. And uh, let me just explain this a little bit. So right now, this, uh, this layer is basically taking 
everything into account and is converting it into a metallic surface. So I only want to play around with the metallic values. So for that, I'm going to click on modify only metallic and switch it on. And the reason I do that is because I only want to play around with the metallic values, um, not with everything else. Right. So we want to maintain the, the difference in the roughness and the, um, the color variation that we had, all of that is going to be part of the original material, right? So we, we don't override everything. So just by doing metallic only, uh, sorry, modify only metallic, we can play with just that finish of that metallic look. So just by doing that, I think that looks pretty good, um, but we can change how, um, how that metal finish is being polished. So if we click on the metal color mode, we can change that to copper, which is kind of like what I was trying to create. And that just changes things a tiny bit. It's kind of like hard to see anyway. Let's go from, oh, actually, let me turn it on and off so you can see. It's changing color a little bit. So the highlights are getting colorized as well. So if I change that to natural color, yeah, it's not gonna be very, very different. So I'm just gonna keep it either natural or copper. Not a big difference. But what's gonna make a difference is the type of finish. So I'm gonna go for polish, I think, but you have a bunch of different ways to polish that metal. So you can go for um, hammered. Uh, and of course, <laughs> you cannot see what you're doing because I basically um, I basically changed the modify uh, only metallic and those finish type um, are actually targeting things like the normal and the hide map. So if I disable this, now you can see what this hammered is doing to the material. Uh, we can do brush and play around with the intensity of that brush finish or um, grinded type of metal. So you can create really cool, really cool stuff. Uh, but of course, this is not necessarily what we want in, in this case. We want something that is kind of like in between metal and a ceramic <laughs> in a way. So that's the reason why I keep this modify only to metallic. And I think it's working fine. Uh, let's just leave it as polish. And now we can go ahead and expand the advanced parameters. And from here, we can play around with, you know, how this polish um, metal or this polish uh, layer is actually interacting with the rest of the stuff that we've done. So the ambient occlusion intensity, again, we can push this all the way to, to one and see, um, you know, a lot of those darker, darker areas or reduce it completely. I personally like to push, like I said, push the, the sliders to the limit, see what they're doing, and then you know, once I understand what they're doing, I can go, all right, this is maybe too much, too intense, but I know that it's starting the occlusion. Um, the radius as well, if I bring in the occlusion map, um, this is basically what it's doing. It's kind of like spreading that occlusion. So I think that the occlusion is working fine as it is right now. And yeah, you can turn on and off uh, different parameters in here. But I think for the most part, this is what I'm looking for. If you look at the at the reference image, is is very very similar. Um, the difference is that the highlights are probably too colorized in this one, uh, so we can change things like that by just going to the colorized one. Let's put this. Let's, I'm just gonna leave the the reference on this side uh, so that I can take that base color and maybe just go for something a bit lighter. There we go. Click OK. So you see, it's very close uh, to what we have in here. So I'm happy with this material. Let's go ahead and leave it as it is. And if you wanna keep tweaking it, you can just go and go to the project. And like I mentioned before, duplicate that and change this completely or you know create a new material. But I think um, the metal is done. All right, so just as a quick recap, we pretty much use the tools that, um, that I've used in the previous materials all the way through colorize. The only new thing in this material is the, the metal finish, right? Which is the one that gives us that metallic finish. So it doesn't have to be metallic from the very beginning. You can turn any material into, you know, something that looks metallic just by adding the metal finish. All right, and just to wrap up this material and to give you one more tool that you can use, especially for this type of metallic stuff um, that looks pretty rough and damaged is the scratches. So we can go ahead and type scratch. There we go scratches and that's going to create a layer on top of everything that's going to add some scratches which is pretty cool so we'll go closer let's turn this on and off right so this is what this layer is doing and that also gives a, an extra level of realism especially if you're doing something that is is very very rough um or you know you want to emphasize the aging of the, the material 
scratches are pretty good for that. So from the scratch um, properties, we can enable chips, uh, but in this case, I think it doesn't work with the chips, but the, the scratches and the micro scratches are on, so we can enable, well, once they're enabled, we can expand the, the properties of the scratches and the micro scratches, and we can increase or decrease the amount of scratches, and we can change the intensity, and we can change the scale, So you can see the difference between the, the larger scratches and the micro scratches. So let's change the amount of the micro scratches, kind of like underneath, and they make them a little bit more intense. Um, and obviously this is too much, so I just wanted to show you what the scratches are doing, but we can reduce the amount and reduce the intensity. Again, it's all about the subtleties. And reduce the intensity as well as the micro scratches. Play around with the rotation. And I think that works just fine. So just a little bit of, um, you know, additional surface noise. Maybe, again, I like to play around with this and spend a lot of time just making sure that the, the hide map is, is working and the normals are working. So these scratches, what you can see here, they're also being added to your normal map as well. So you can enable normal and get closer, try to find them. If I increase the intensity, there we go. So you see, these are the... These are the scratches that you've been adding into the normal. So I like to just bring in the 2D, uh, the 2D view as well, just to, to make sure that I'm not creating like crazy difference um, in the 2D maps. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and wrap it up here. This is our metallic kind of like surface that we're going to use to blend with the other uh, ceramic bit. So that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to create the rest of the materials for our scene.